Well, hi everyone out there. I want to uh, invite you to our 15-20 minute interview with a very special guest called Guy Leach. He is Australia's number one fitness guy and was crowned seven time world Ironman champion. And pretty much everything he's touched has turned to success. So I just want to get to the bottom of all of that. <laughs> Welcome, Guy. Welcome. Thank you. Nice Thanks intro. for having me. <laughs> yes, it's all true. It's all true. You've even got your own fitness products out there, and I know you've got some really exciting things in the pipeline as well for your brand. And I would love to know, and so would my viewers and readers, what you've done to 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 become so successful and then so passionate, and so driven. Well, I think um, I think anyone that has, has done a lot in any sector loves what they do. I think that. You know, for me, I've always been about health and fitness. It's been an important part of my life, and I suppose something that um, you know I wake up every day and want to do. And it, that that started with sport. Um, and I I competed in Ironman races for a lot of years, and uh, I wanted to be the best at that. And um, from when I retired from doing Ironman racing, I literally always wanted to help other people around health and fitness, and I learned so much. Mm. Uh, during you know my days that you know I felt like I had a lot to offer and so you know I think that when you start talking about success in, in that respect um, you know I think length of time and, and knowing what you're about and where you're going and having goals and strategies and plans and you know being very honest with yourself in what you're doing are all pieces of the puzzle to to gaining success and doing a lot and um, you know I get out of bed every day loving what I do and Fantastic. And you get the results because of it. Yeah. Fantastic. And I think that you've got um, a, a really interesting story and maybe you could share with the viewers about when you were a, a, a child and you saw your dad go through some health issues and I think that was a big motivator for you as well, wasn't it? Yeah. So, so I suppose everyone can look back in their life and see defining moments when there's been something that you know, sort of have, has changed you, I suppose, and you look back and say, you know, that was a moment when this happened. Well, for me, it was, um, you know, I was 12 years of age and was with my brother and we are walking to a restaurant in the evening to go to dinner and, and Dad had a heart attack in front of both my brother and I and hit the deck and was unconscious. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I suppose, you know, that day was, uh, it, it shaped my thinking. Dad survived. He he had to have a quadruple bypass. He was only 42 years of age. Um, you know, and I, I think that you know what what I learned from that day was that you know lifestyle choices you make in your in your everyday life, uh, you know, pretty much decide what is going to happen to you down the track. And you know, because of that, and seeing it so vividly in front of me, it just meant that I wanted to not be in that situation. So. I, done everything I can since then to give myself the best chance to be healthy and not have that happen to me. Yeah, fantastic. And I guess, you know, the, the, the fitness and the sport came along with that. And then I guess for a lot of people, um, I think exercising and diet is a really important thing, but some people sometimes struggle with one or the other. What mm. advice would you have for anyone who's sort of struggling with achieving weight loss goals or, or fitness goals? Well, I think that you. I mean, look, I, I've. I know I'm not perfect by any means, and I think that I can understand where someone could be super fit and exercise a lot, but then not have a great diet, and people can eat really well and not not want to exercise. So I get what what uh, different people are like. Um, I think that the important thing to remember is that um, for me and my experiences around wanting to do something and setting goals and having a plan, you, you've got to really look at the stage before that and mm -hmm. you know, setting goals are well and good but you need to find the reason why you're doing something and, and you need to have something that's quite strong and something that you know, means something to you and you know, I call it the why behind the, the goal. You know? So for me it was always about not wanting to be in a situation like my dad. Um, and being healthy, and so you know, it was quite a strong reason to go about what I was doing. So I, so I, I think that for people out there, you, you've got to really find uh, your why and what you're doing and why you want to do it, 
and mm. then set a goal that's realistic to you, and yeah. it's your thing, and then from that, then set it, set set a plan around it. And I always saw myself as a healthy person, and deep down in my mind, believed that that's what I was, and so I acted like a healthy person. So when choices came about during the day, like do I get out of bed early in the morning and do some exercise before the day starts? Well, yes, that's what the healthy person does. And do yes. I go for the apple or do I go for the lollies? Uh, you mm. know, when I'm snacking, and you know, a healthy person goes for the apple, and that's how I saw myself. And um, you know, it, um, it's it's done well for me. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And you're also quite lucky. I know you told me your story about when you started training with your coach, and he was having you set goals at the age of nine, was it? Yeah. So, uh, look, I, I had a swimming background. I was a swimmer before I did the Ironman sport, and got to like being a national champion for my age when I was nine and, and loved swimming and the feeling of winning and training and the like. And so he, he actually pulled me aside after winning an event and said to me, it, it, you're now ready to go and take this on board. And it was, it was a logbook. And the logbook was set out so at the front of the book you could put down your goals and your times for the season. Just give me one second. I know this is live, but my dog's at the door scratching, and I don't let him in. keep scratching. Bring the dog into the interview too. The right. more, the merrier. Come up here. Righto. So, so literally, um, the front can of the book. Can, can we have a look? That, can the, we have the, a look the, at the dog? There he is. <laughs> look, 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 little Vegas. So anyway, so the goals, Vegas. the goals at the front of the book were around the season, and. On the other side of the page, the goals were around were around the, the, the next year. And so I had to write these times down, and my coach had another column where he would write down the times that he thought I could do. And they weren't the same. He thought I could do so much better than what I thought. And then I had to write down in the logbook my training session every day. Yeah. And then at the end of the week, rate out of 10 how I thought I trained to get closer to my goals. And then my coach would take the book back he would then go and write down out of 10 what he thought I scored and mm -hmm. give me the book back on a Monday to start the next week. Now, and I've got to tell you, for the first four or five months, my score out of 10 was seven, eights, and nines. And my coach's score for me on how he thought I was going was five, sixes, and sevens. So he right. was like, so I always had a, an opinion that I was going better than what I was. And you know, and it, and it took me a while to really realise that I had more in me. I could stretch myself further. I could do more. Um, and what I was capable of was a lot more than what I actually saw. So I learned that at the age of nine and ten, and it's been a very powerful message for me across everything I do. And so I'm brutally honest with myself. I'm brutally honest with other people as well. Um, yeah. And I've just learned that. Unless you have a roadmap and an understanding of where you're going, you're rudderless. You don't create great things. And yeah. I also believe that what other people see as being unbelievable is not really unbelievable when you go and do these things correctly because it's mm -hmm. just part of what you do. And um, mm -hmm. you just got to understand how to structure it in a way where you, you, you do a lot where the... Yeah. A lot of other people see it as being something that's near, near impossible, but it's not at all. Yeah. No, I agree. And, and, and sometimes if those goals are broken down into little easy mini goals or, you know, achievable goals and break them down into smaller achievable steps, I think what does seem impossible can become possible. And You, know, you, um, need, to, you need to. See, but I, I think there's a real strength in understanding every day, being at the little goals and the bigger ones. Mm. what you need to do to get to that next step. And so when someone says to you, should you do this or should you do that, or there is a yes or no answer to something, you're very certain about what the answer is because you've got everything laid out in front of you. So you don't mm. waste time, you don't muck around. Every day you can sort of feel like you're moving forward because you've got it all laid out like a road map, like being in a car and having the, um, you know, the, the satellite navigation on. It just makes one second. <laughs> it, just, it just makes life very, very easy. And I think that, you know, the message with that is that if you want to get clear, if you want to get certain in what you're doing and you want to create some pretty amazing things, then doing that is the way about getting 
those results and those feelings inside. Yeah, I agree. And having it written out and just seeing that every day is 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 an amazingly powerful thing to do as well. And right. do you also have a really cool um, sort of I guess what you what you probably call a mental checkup that you do on yourself sort of every quarter where you sort of check in and you still use that rating system, don't you? Of one to ten, yeah. how everything's going in your life. Yeah. Yeah. So I learned that during my sporting career, being the best in the world at Ironman, that you weren't necessarily good across other aspects of your life and I thought that once I retired from being a full-time athlete that I wanted to get my whole world in order and I thought the easiest way to do that was not unlike the logbook but actually taking that concept of rating yourself out of 10 across the different segments of your life being your health, finances, yeah. your relationship, your family, these sort of things was a really smart way of getting a gauge on just how you're going in all yeah. the different areas and um, you know you never ever um, tens out of tens across the board but I try to come in at sevens and eights out of ten for those different um, those different areas of my world and you know if you're doing that you, you create a sense of happiness across your um, your life you know and, and that's important because you just it's all well and good you know achieving things but you want to do it in a happy state as well yeah yeah no I think there's a fantastic tips there guy and where are we are I think we're nearly almost at 15 20 minutes so we, we can do, the, we can do this again in a couple of weeks time I've got so much more to tell you <laughs> I know I know you have which is why I was about to say let's definitely do this again and and um, I'd love to have you back and we can share some more Done. gems with everybody and I hope that everyone out there that's listening got some amazing tips from guy because honestly um, I think anything that you've done in, in your life can be applied to anyone and everyone out there, whether it's fitness goals, health goals, diet goals, relationships, yeah. family. Well, we'll, we'll yeah. talk a bit about food next time because your, your concepts mm -hmm. around raw food and the like um, is something that I do do, and I believe that um, you know if you want to better yourself, you know whether it's losing weight or feeling good or all the all the rest of it, mm -hmm. that you know what you put in your mouth is such an important part of all of that, and um, you know I've got my opinions and strategies around that eating piece and uh, I'm more than happy to share that next time. I know and I'd love for you to tell our, our viewers your story on your um, diet journey as well because that's yeah. An interesting one too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We we'll look forward thank to you. seeing you soon. Thank you everyone. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Well, hi everyone out there. I want to uh, invite you to a 15-20 minute interview with a very special guest called Guy Leach. He is Australia's number one fitness guy and was 
crowned seven time world Ironman champion. And pretty much everything you've touched has turned to success. So I just want to get to the bottom of all of that. <laughs> Welcome, Guy. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yes, it's all true. It's all true. You've even got your own fitness products out there, and I know you've got some really exciting things in the pipeline as well for your brand. And I would love to know, so with my viewers and readers, what you've done to to to, to become so successful and so passionate and so driven. Well, I think um, I think anyone that has, has done a lot in any sector loves what they do. I think that. You know, for me, I've always been about health and fitness. It's been an important part of my life, and I suppose something that um, you know I wake up every day and want to do. And that that started with sport, um, and I I competed in Ironman races for a lot of years, and uh, I wanted to be the best at that. And um, from when I retired from doing Ironman racing, I literally always wanted to help other people around health and fitness, and I learned so much. Mm. Uh, during you know, my days that you know, I felt like I had a lot to offer. And so, you know, I think that when you start talking about success in, in that respect, um, you know, I think length of time and, and knowing what you're about and where you're going and having goals and strategies and plans and, you know, being very honest with yourself and what you're doing are all pieces of the puzzle to, to gain success in doing a lot. And, um, you know, I get out of bed every day loving what I do. And you get the result because of it. Yeah. Fantastic. And I think that you've got um, a, a really interesting story, and maybe you could share with the viewers about when you were a, a, a child and you saw your dad go through some health issues, and I think that was a big motivator for you as well, wasn't it? Yeah, so, so I suppose everyone can look back in their life and see defining moments when there's been something that, you know, sort of had. Has changed your clothes, and you look back and say, you know, that was a moment when this happened. Well, for me, it was, um, you know, I was 12 years of age, and I was with my brother, and we were walking to a restaurant in the evening to go to dinner, and, and Dad had a heart attack in front of both my brother and I, and hit the deck and was unconscious. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I suppose, you know, that day was uh, it, it shaped my thinking. Dad survived. He he had to have a quadruple bypass. He was only 42 years of age. Um, you know, and I, I think that you know, what, what I learned from that day was that you know, lifestyle choices you make in your in your everyday life, uh, you know, pretty much decide what is going to happen to you down the track. And you know, because of that, and seeing it so vividly in front of me, it just meant that I wanted to not be in that situation. So. I, Done everything I can since then to give myself the best chance to be healthy and not have that happen to me. Yeah, fantastic. And I guess you know the the, the fitness and the sport came along with that. And then I guess for a lot of people, um, I think exercising and diet is a really important thing. But some people sometimes struggle with one or the other. What mm. advice would you have for anyone sort of struggling with achieving weight loss goals or, or fitness goals? I think that you, I mean, look, I, I've, I, I know I'm not perfect by any means, and I think that I can understand where someone could be super fit and exercise a lot, but then not have a great diet, and people can eat really well and not, not want to exercise, so I get what, what uh, different people are like. Um, I think that the important thing to remember is that, um, for me, in my experiences around wanting to do something and setting goals and having a plan, you, you've got to really look at the stage before that and you know, setting goals are well and good, but you need to find a reason why you're doing something and, and you need to have something that's quite strong and something that you know, means something to you and you know, I call it the why behind the, the goal. You know? So for me it was always about not wanting to be in a situation like my dad um, and being healthy, and so you know it was quite a strong reason to go about what I was doing. So I, so I, I think that people out there, you, you've got to really find out your why and what you're doing and why you want to do it, and then mm -hmm. set a goal that's realistic to you, and, yeah. yourself, and then from that then set it, set set a plan around it. And I always saw myself as a healthy person, and deep down in my mind. Believe that that's what I was, and so I acted like a healthy person.
and so when choices came about during the day, like do I get out of bed early in the morning and do some exercise before the day starts? Well, yes, that's what the other person does. And do yeah. I go for the apple or do I go for the lollies? And you mm -hmm. know, when I'm snacking, and you know, a healthy person goes for the apple, and that's how it's almost done. Um, you know, it's um, it's, it's done well for me. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. And you were also quite lucky, I know you told me a story about when you started training with your coach and he was having you set goals at the age of nine, was it? Yeah, so look, I had a swimming background and I was a swimmer before I did the Ironman sport and got to like, be a national champion for my age when I was nine and, and loved swimming and the feeling of winning and training and the like. And so he, he actually pulled me aside after winning an event and said to me, if you're now ready to go and take this on board, and it was it was a log book. And the log book was set out so that the front of the book you can put down your goals and your times for season. Just give me one second. I know this is live my dogs the door scratching and I can't let them Bring the dog into the interview too. The more right. the merrier. Right. So so literally, um, the front of the book, there he is, <laughs> look, 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 so anyway, so the goals, the goals at the front of the book were around the season, and on the other side of the page, the goals were around, were around the, the, the next year. And so I had to write this time down, and my coach had another column where he would write in the times that he thought I could do. And they weren't the same. He thought I could do so much better than what I thought. And then I had to write down in the logbook my training session every day. Yeah. And at the end of the week, right out of 10, how I thought I trained to get closer to my goals. And then my coach would take the book back. He would then go and write down out of 10 what he thought I scored. And he'd give me the book back on Monday to start the next week. And then I've got to tell you, for the first four or five months, my score out of 10 was seven, eight to nines, and my coach's score for me, how he thought oh, I was going, was five, six and seven. So he was, like, so I know I had a, an opinion that I was going better than what I was. And, you know, and, and it took me a while to really realise that more in me, I could strip it to further, I could do more, um, and what I was capable of was a lot more than what I actually saw. So I learned that at the age of nine and ten, and it's been a very powerful message for me across everything I do. And so I'm brutally honest with myself, I'm brutally honest with other people as well. Yeah. Um, and I've just learned that unless you have a roadmap and an understanding of where you're going, you're rudderless, you don't create great things. And yeah. I also believe that what other people see as being unbelievable is not really unbelievable when you go and do these things correctly. Because it's just mm -hmm. part of what you do, and um, mm -hmm. you just got to understand how to structure it in a way where you you, you do a lot, where the, yeah. a lot of other people see it as being something that's near and impossible, but it's not at all. No, I agree. And, and, and sometimes if those goals are broken down into little easy mini goals or you know achievable goals, and break them down into smaller achievable steps. I think what does seem impossible can't become possible. And, so um, you need to. You need to. See, I, I think there's a real strength in understanding every day, being at the little goals and the bigger ones, mm. what you need to do to get to that next step. And so, when someone says to you, "Should you do this or should you do that?" or there, there's a yes or no answer to something, you're very certain about what the answer is because you've got everything laid out in front of you. So you don't mm. waste time. You don't mark around. Every day you can sort of feel like you're moving forward because you've got to be all laid out like a roadmap, like being in a car and having the, um, you know, the, the satellite navigation on. It just makes one second. It just, it just makes life very, very easy. And I think that, you know, the message with that is that if you want to get clear, if you want to get certain in what you're doing and you want to create some pretty amazing things, then doing that is the way about getting those results and those feelings and so on. Yeah, I agree. And having it written out and just seeing that every day is, is, is an amazing, powerful thing to do as well. And do you, 
also have a really cool, um, sort of I guess what you what you probably call a mental checkup that you do on yourself sort of every quarter where you sort of check in and you still use that rating system, don't you, of one to ten yeah. every time in your life? Yeah. Yeah, so I learned that during my sporting career, being the best in the world that I'm, and that you won't necessarily put across other aspects of your life. And I thought that once I retired from being a full-time athlete, that I wanted to get my whole world in order. And I thought the easiest way to do that was not a lot of the logbook, but actually taking that concept of rating yourself out of 10 across the different segments of your life, being your health, finances, your relationship, your family, these sort of things was a really smart way of getting a gauge on just how you're going in all yeah. the areas. And, um, you know, you never ever um, tens out of tens across the board, but I try to come in at sevens and eights out of ten for those different um, those different areas of my world. And you know, if you're doing that, you, you create a sense of happiness across your, um, your life, you know, and, and that's important because you just... It's all well and good, you know, achieving things, but you want to do it in a happy state as well. Yeah, yeah no, I think those are fantastic tips there, Guy. And where are we at? I think we're nearly almost at 15, 20 minutes. So we, we can do this again in a couple of weeks' time. I've got so much more to tell you. I know, I know you have, which is why I was about to say, let's definitely do this again. And, and um, I'd love to have you back and we can share some more yeah. tips with everybody. And I hope that everyone out there that's just got some amazing tips from Guy because honestly, um, I think anything that you've done in your life can be applied to anyone and everyone out there, whether it's fitness goals, health goals, diet goals, relationships, yeah. family. Well, we'll, we'll yeah. talk a bit about food next time because you know, your concept around raw food and the like um, is something that I do too. And I believe that um, you know, if you want to better yourself, you know, whether it's losing weight or feeling good or all the, all the rest of it, that you know what you put in your mouth is such an important part of all of that, and um, you know I've got my opinions and strategies around that eating piece, and uh, I'm more than happy to share that next time. And I'd love you to tell our, our viewers your story on your um, diet journey as well. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, it didn't work properly, but I'll have to run with it. At least we get to see Guy. It didn't work properly. Because when I click, when you click on the screen to show just Guy on the screen, then you don't see me. So unless you keep that window down there and it's toggling between the yeah. two. It doesn't do the, the flicky thing. Okay, and for whatever reason, all of this needs to be cut, so we need to edit this. Are you still running? I know. I thought I'd stop the broadcast, and it's still running. Like, so from here. Okay. I'll put it next time, because your concept around raw food and the like um, is something that I do do, and I believe that, um, you know, if you want to better yourself, you know, whether it's losing weight or feeling good or all the, all the rest of it, mm. that, you know, what you put in your mouth is such an important part of all of that. And, um, you know, I've got my opinions and strategies around that eating piece, and uh, I'm more than happy to share that next time. I know, and I'd love you to tell our, our viewers your story on your um, diet journey as well, because that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> 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 Got to cut that. 12:49. 12:49. Got to be cut. All right. So. I have to have a cigarette. I'm about to fuc